एजुकेटेड कॉलेजेस इंस्टीट्यूशन अब सी एस यू वो आर प्रेजेंट ऑनलाइन इंक्लूडिंग द डीन डायरेक्टर्स प्रिंसिपल अदर ऑफिसर्स एंड स्टूडेंट आई लाइक टू वेलकम अवर लर्नेड वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर श्रीनिवास परखेड़ी जी वो आर जस्ट कम्प्लीटेड टूडे वन ईयर ऑफ हिस्स फाइव ईयर टेन ईयर सक्सेसफुली वी कंग्रेचुलेट हिम Dr. Narayan Goswami, 
तिथं प्रोग्राम काय असतात आव्हान इंडियन काउन्सिल फॉर कल्चरल कल्चरल रिलेशन आय सी सी आर वी वेलकम हिम इन अवर युनिव्हर्सिटी वी वेलकम दि अदर चीफ स्पीकर ऑफ नॅशनल युथ डे डॉक्टर भरत गुप्त हिज इज रिटायर्ड प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम युनिव्हर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली अँड ए वेल नोन फिगर इन द फील्ड ऑफ आर्ट अँड हिंदू स्टडी हिज हिज अ क्लासिसिस्ट थिएटर थिअरिस्ट सर्वाहार प्लेयर सुरबाहार प्लेयर अँड ए म्युझिकोलॉजिस्ट हिज रायटिंग हॅव ऑलरेडी अल्टर्ड दि परसेप्शन ऑफ द अन्शियंट ग्रीक ड्रामा ॲज द ऑरिजिन ऑफ वेस्टर्न थिएटर अँड एस्टॅब्लिश इट्स ऑटर क्लोजनेस विथ अन्शियंट इंडियन थिएटर फॉर मोर दॅन थर्टी फायव्ह इयर्स नाव He has lectured extensively at the universities in India, North America, Europe, and Greece. Certainly, he is a trustee of executive member of, uh, uh, sorry, currently. Currently, he is a trustee and executive me- member of IGNCA, Indira Gandhi National Center for Art, and a fellow that is Ratna Sadasya. संगीत नाटक इज अ प्रोफिशियंट युजर ऑफ हिंदी इंग्लिश संस्कृत अँड ग्रीक लँग्वेजेस फॉर इज स्कॉलरली स्टडीज इज थ्री हंड्रेड व्हिडिओ लेक्चर ऑफ फायव्ह हंड्रेड आवर्स कॅन बी सीन ऑन युट्यूब चॅनेल आय ऑल्सो वेलकम ऑल द स्टुडंट्स फॅकल्टीज प्रोफेसर्स डीन डायरेक्टर्स ऑफ जी एस यू now coming to the special lecture the colonized bhagavad gita the translation problem between english and sanskrit bhagavad gita is the most sacred text not only in our of our country but of the entire universe it is the magnum opus of bhagwan vyasa at its place in india indian culture is footprint in our tradition it has been said in the context of uh, mahabharata that what is what is not in bharata that is mahabharata is not in bharata that is in india jab nasti bharate tab nasti bharate this statement fully apply to the the bhagavad gita which is the most important part of mahabharata it is also rightly said that if bhagavad gita is read is well read well understood well digested then what is the benefit of detailed descriptions of other scriptures or shastras gita sugita kartavya himan nahi after this study the other part of the lecture is the translation problem between english and sanskrit 700 verses of gita written in sanskrit have been translated into english 100 times this the last 18th century late in 18th century you can say it is really a challenge of producing lucid english translation of the text the translators trouble are magnified when dealing with two very different languages such as sanskrit and english a vancouver scholar offers has decolonized english translation the bhagavad gita comes alive and replaces so with the correct and intended sanskrit word atma which means the invisible immortal me today is vivekananda jayanti observed as a national youth day rashtriya yuva divas a other lecture the 
ये हम स्वामी विवेकानंद टू ऑब्जर्व दिस डे जयंती एज द नेशनल यूथ डे व्हाट एवर आई हैव टू स्पीक ऑन दिस ओकेजन आई हैव वर्सिफाइड माय थॉट्स इन द बिगनिंग सो प्रोफेसर गुप्ता विल डिलीवर ए स्पेशल लेक्चर इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज इंडिया इज स्पिरिचुअल द मैसेज ऑफ स्वामी विवेकानंद for want of time i don't elaborate we will directly hear hear to professor gupta about this important thing so thank you all now keeping in view the indian tradition of ajit devo bhava i humbly request our esteemed vice chancellor professor srinivas parkhari sir to offer ang vastra रिपेयर ग्राहम मैडम I request uh, our acting registrar, respected Professor Gayatri Murli Krishna Sir, offer her welcome to respected Vice Chancellor Sir. Strong 
Abbas say? I am always reminded each time the presentation ceremony takes place. Could this be turned up? I am always reminded in the felicitation process of the profound respect and the true meaning of Namaste. Right, the Namaste culture. I think we still have a bit of it on here. Let's see. That the Namaste culture of Bharat is the most beautiful culture in the world. Because at the beginning and end of every conversation, when we see one another, part, we remind each other that we are Atmas, that we are immortal beings in a temporary world. I have to tell you something. As I was watching the ceremony and being in the presence of you all, I thought for a moment the plane that I had gotten on to go to New Delhi had crashed, and I was now in Smarga. I was in the court of Yamaraj and they were deciding if I get to go in. And so I saw you all in that light as my heroes, as the persons that I have emulated for my entire life. I didn't know about you until I studied Sanskrit with my professor of Sanskrit, Dr. Ramanath Sharma, who at the time was teaching in the East West Center. He was a Benares Brahmin, born into a Brahmin family. He was Pandita. He had memorized the 4,000 grammatical rules of the Ashtadhyaya Panadi and do them by heart. He would say something in Sanskrit. He would say, Rule number 2223, if this and this and that. I found myself in the presence of Pandita. I'd had a group before that. I'd spent five years as a Brahmacharya. So he considered me Adhikari. I had studied three years of Jokjana, but I had never been in the presence of the true Acharya of Sanskrit. So though I am not one, I learned what one is. I learned the magnitude of that experience. And I feel it when I'm in your presence. So I want you to know right away that I did not translate Bhagavad Gita thinking of myself as an Acharya or thinking of myself as knowing it better than those who had translated it for me. I've done it as a saver to clean up the residue of colonization. And for that reason, there is no tikka, there is no commentary because I am not qualified. I'm not a qualified Vedanta to write a better tikka on the Bhagavad Gita. But I am a 99.9% English user. And my seva in the Vedic community is to clean up the toxic English effects from the era of colonization. I'll tell you a funny story. Some time back, I spoke in the House of Commons in the UK with some other dignitaries. Subramanian Swami was there speaking, and I was speaking and another scholar of Sanskrit from Britain named Satish Sharma. And Satish Sharma introduced me, just like I was introduced now, but he said, or in other words, Macaulay's worst nightmare, Mr. Jeffrey Armstrong. Macaulay started the problem when the British said, go to India and tell us how to destroy their culture and enslave them and colonized. And they'll call me back before the House of Commons, the same one I was in. They said, well, I've been to India. And I found out that everywhere there is a gentleman and a lady, they're all refined, they're intelligent, and it's all because of the Sanskrit language. So we must destroy the Sanskrit language in order to conquer and dominate the culture of India. And that is the program that they institute. The result of that program is that English is the language taught in your school systems. And English is the least precise, least perfect language 
on our planet from it. It is a mess. It is a conglomeration of different rules or group of things with no rules. The roots are not known to people. People who use words and don't really know their meaning. I'll give you just one example I think you could join. The word God. The word that was used to remove Bhagavan from the Bhagavad Gita. I haven't seen a translation of the Bhagavad Gita that calls Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Sri Bhagavan in the translation. Instead, they call him God. So then I asked, what does the word God mean? Think about it for a moment. Because I'm going to hold you accountable to know the precise definition. Ready? Think about it. What is the precise definition of God? the English language. Now, and whatever you say is not quite there, unless you know the etymology of the word God. So there's two kinds of dictionaries in internet. Usage dictionaries, which are for everyday common people. They don't say where the word came from. They don't take you to its root to its Eruvita. Instead, they just tell you how to use it in everyday conversation. But an etymological dictionary in the English language will tell you the following. This English word God came from the Dutch root shield, which came from the German Gutam, which came from the Sanskrit Gutam. So, Hutam, the smoke arising from an Agni Hotra Yajna, is the actual root of the English word God. Holy smokes. Batman. This is amazing. You mean all the Christians are calling the Supreme Being by a everyday Sanskrit word in the smoke? coming up from the pagan fire sacrifice that they hate? Yep, that's it. You can start laughing if you'd like. It's very funny. It's ridiculous. Their culture is dominant, but they took a sideways word out of the Agni Hotra Yajna that they hate. They used to burn people at the stake for doing Agni Hotra Yajna. And they took the word Hutam and made it the word for the Supreme Being, and now no one in America knows that. Knows that it's rooted in Sanskrit. No one in England knows that, and frankly, they don't care, except the intelligent ones. And that's where the revolution is. We're going to bring Hating Vidya to all of the intelligent people in the world. You will bring it in its Sanskrit perfection, and I will clean up the English. This is what has not happened yet. And we are in the middle of the, the beginning of the Vedic Renaissance. Think of it this way. The people in the Abrahamic religions call themselves the people of a book. So if they're the people of a book, what are we? People of a library. Which is more interesting, one book or a library? So what I mean, Christians, I say, I've read your book. Have you read our library? Have you read any books from our library? Now here's where we're going. How does someone become a Vedanta Acharya? They have to write a tika or commentary, don't they? On the Prasthana Trai, the three pillars of Vedic evidence. That is the thing I'm unqualified to do. I don't know Sanskrit well enough to write a tika on the 550 Vedanta Sutras of Veda Vyasa or the 10 principles of Upanishads, O Purnamada, Purnamida, Purna, Purna, Muda, Jude, Purnasya, Purnamadaya. CCG, I can repeat it. I can't explain it at that level. That's an acharya. So, that is the depth of this video. And trying to bring a certain amount of that into the English language, which would you bring? Would you make a public printing of the Vedanta Sutras of Veda Vyasa? How about 10 principal Upanishads? No, because people will say which one is right. They won't know what to do with so much evidence. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the only candidate 
board? And now, if you had a computer, and you do, how would it be if I took away your user's manual? Useless. If you didn't have the user's manual, useless. So I propose to you that this is the user manual being a human being. It is not a religion. It is not something you join. It is not a faith. It informs you who you are, where you are, why you're here, how you're here, when to leave, how to leave, if you want to. It gives you a direct, and what kind of relationship does it give you with, I'm not going to say God, am I? Bhagavan, no wait, Sri Bhagavan, right? And what is the relationship that we're supposed to develop by reading this user's manual? What are true? was talking to Sri Bhagavan in the beginning of the Gita. Bhagavan says to Arjun, you know Arjun, because we're friends, I'm going to share myself with you and tell you the secrets of existence. So this is not only a user's manual, it's user friendly. Now just think about this for a moment, because you're about to lose the end of youth, the whole generation on a global basis. Because no one is giving them one single text which they can regularly refer to to explain what it is to be a Hindu. And there's been so much propaganda against the Vedic culture that all of that is what people know. And the children then don't know what to do to explain that. And they don't have a user's manual for being Hindu. And they're living in New York or Canada or somewhere around the world. Or even here, they're watching television and seeing everything in those eyes. So, I have a proposition to you that this is the Vedic Renaissance. That we're not the people of a book, we're the people of a library. But there is a book in that library which every Vedanta, every Acharya must comment upon. Or, if it's translated into English, it at least must be translated into clear English. And we're going to go there next, but first I forgot something in the beginning. I forgot in your presence, because I have so many gurus in the room, that I didn't say thank you to the ICCR for this amazing award for making this trip possible. And to you for allowing us to speak bringing me here. And I didn't say oh, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Mahishma, Guru Sankhya, Madhav Brahma, does my Shri which is what I used to begin. And I consider as a linguist that the yoga I practice is on yoga. So, now, with them, do you see where we're poised now? Do you see the dilemma? I, a master of English, and knowing enough Sanskrit be dangerous. And you being or working toward being masters of state. But how are you going to reliably translate it? You do not own a dictionary that will allow you to do that. You see the problem? Because then you will say spiritual. What is spiritual? I tell you, it means to breathe. Spirit is air. Inhalation, expiration, inspiration, inspire, to leave your body in six to expire. So, when somebody tells me they're spiritual, I say, I'm glad you're breathing. But I still have no idea what you're trying to say. I've told you about God. How about sin? Does it sound like any Sanskrit word? How about him, son? How about the age becomes an S? And himself becomes sin. So, Sanskrit is an 
root of Latin and Greek and Russian. You know, Russia is Rishia originally. It's not Russia, it's Rishia. And Scandinavia is Scandinavia. And transcendental is transcondere, to leap beyond Prakriti. But do people in the Western civilization know these connections? You're thinking, who's Skanda, right? You know who Skanda is? Dhanapati's brother. So, the explanation of the devas and devis, the explanation of all of these things for which the Vedic culture has been written, is part of this project. When they're brought into English correctly, they're the keepers of the laws of nature. So let's think for a second. If there was a corporation and a very big one, would there be different departments? Yes. Would there be department heads? Yes. And what are those called in Sanskrit? Devas and Devis. Are they not the department heads of Prakriti? Don't make it more complicated than that. That's what it is. Now, anyone in the world can say, oh, so you say this entire universe is a corporation. No, it's a corpsuration. It's where everyone becomes a corpse. But they don't, do they? So here's the other dilemma. Point to another culture where they say you cannot go. My first degree was psychology. All of the neurosis in the world is because people are afraid because they don't know who they are. They think they're going to die. They can't get happy. They only have one miserable life or one life full of problems. They don't understand why or how. That's the complete dilemma of the whole rest of the world, including so-called scientists. They're a one lifetime blind religion. That's what they really are. So, it is a moment in history where if we work together, we can take Vedic texts and sit and talk about the true Sanskrit meaning, find the just perfect English words, and then slowly translate the Upanishads. Slowly translate. You will do this, not I. You will translate Vedanta Sutras. You will look at the tikas of the various great Acharyas, find English words to represent them. So this is the project in front of us right now. I want you to understand that if that doesn't change, how can you reprogram the world? So the Vedic civilization doesn't want to take over the world. The Vedic civilization wants to bring clarity to the world because they know that from that clarity of understanding, they will become dharmic, which means what? Dream. What is dream? Dream is the ri. And what is ri? The root of. How about prakriti? How about the rita? The rita is the basis of prakriti. And then the ri, is the basis of listen carefully, read, write, arithmetic in English. It's all read. It's the read. And so, how about the word write? Read. So, who's teaching that read and the rhythm and prakriti and we is the jiva atmas? So, if we're here in prakriti, where's the alternative? Brahman. But what is the procedure then for extricating oneself from being within Prakriti? Who's teaching this in a clinical manner? My first degree was psychology. Suke Oloji. Suke is the Greek goddess of butterflies. Sigmund Freud said the purpose of psychology is freeing the butterfly. But Western psychologists took their wisdom, their knowledge from Bharat during colonization. There were two kinds of colonization. Take money, gold, anything valuable, jewels. The British called India the jewel of, and the crown of their empire. But otherwise, beyond the jewels, you would take the work, take the culture, take the words and steal it and then incorporate it into yours as my theory. Abraham Maslow, levels of development, chakra system. The body types, William Sheldon, the psychologist, 
endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph, vata, pitta, kapha, kapha, pitta, vata. All of this is actually colonized Sanskrit, colonized Samkhya. And this is Samkhya, is it not? Not eating, not eating. That's what we're doing. And that's how it's used, and that's why it's not a faith, and it's not a religion. It's a process of extricating oneself from Prakriti, step by step, slowly. How many yoga teachers in the world right now, there's hundreds of millions of them, how many of them teach the eight limbs of yoga correctly, according to Patanjali? Yoga Shin, Vritti, Nirvana. What is a Vritti? Let's look for another word that's hidden somewhere. What's the English word that came from Vritti? You'll like this one. Advertisement. Vert. Vert in English is print. So Vrittis are those things that have twisted us. We get twisted because we're orbiting inside of Prakriti. And so because we're orbiting inside of Prakriti, we get twisted in knots. And yoga is removing yoga skin. Vritti Niroda is removing those twistedness from us. My pranayama, my asana, also my samkhya, but also my karma yoga and also my bhakti yoga. So it's a series of methodologies, but moksha is the game, isn't it? That's the game. Now let's take one more angle on this. What is the movie that's all the rage in the theaters right now that is actually a Sanskrit? I'm telling you. Avatar. So, what gave him the right to take a very important Sanskrit word, right? How many avatars? Matya, Purva, Rahastra, Nara, Singho, Chavamana, Ramo, Rama, Chavamastra, Krishna, Kalvira, Janardana. How did that play at the beginning of the avatar movie? Or is he just colonized? And that, since you know Sanskrit and know the culture, why don't you start a campaign to tell Mr. Cameron, hey, you can't just take sacred terminology from a country. That's colonization. That's acting like you have a right to take one of our most sacred words, avatar. You might as well have said Bhagavan or Ram and Sita and made a movie and done whatever he wanted. That's what he's done. So this is the way the word world is going to be reshaped. We can't do it with power now, so we're going to do it with words. And it's the age of information. This should be the age in which you rise to the ultimate position of knowing. And all that's necessary is to have an English department which is as precise in its understanding of English as the Sanskrit department is precise in its understanding of everything. Meaning, we have to get English a part of your program or you'll be smart in Sanskrit and make a fool of yourself with English. You will not be able to write a translation until the Sanskrit words are represented correctly by groupings of English words. So listen carefully. There are no synonyms in English for the words that I've just used. There's no synonym in English for Brahman. There's no synonym in English for Atman. There's no synonym in English for prakriti. None of those words have any synonym. It's called no lack of synonymity. Because they don't have it, there is no English word you can replace them with. Then you must take a group of English words and replace the Sanskrit word carefully so that as many of its features shine through. That's what I did in the Gita. So this Gita has a glossary, and the paragraphs in the glossary are this long. In most Gita's, you go look and see the English translations, there's two or three words to explain a complex Sanskrit word, as if there's a synonym in English. So, of course, everyone then says, God, sin, heaven, hell, all of these cliched Christian words and replaces the key words of the Bhagavad Gita. So, we are not going to teach the whole world Sanskrit, but we can, in a few years, teach them 200 Sanskrit words, but they must know to understand what? The Vedic world View. It's a world view, first and foremost, and that's exactly what the avatar descended to make clear. First, the universe is ultimately user-friendly. Tell me another tradition that says that. There is no. 
Christianity and the Abrahamic religions use fear and intimidation to dominate people in their congregations. That's why they call them the flock. They're sheep. They're treated like unknowing animals, to which I say, flock you. No, the Vedic culture treats everyone with respect. Namaste. Educates them, gives them the knowledge that they need. By what? Giving them a vocabulary that can talk about what is beyond our immediate sight here. So this is the crucial moment in history where if we do this together, so I will be your English side, you will be my Sanskrit side, and together we can change the direction of what's happening right now for the entire diaspora community of the Vedic civilization. We can have programs that explain the Vedic culture so that anyone can do this is what we've been doing at Boston. We do shows on, on various channels, and I explain just a segment at a time this work, that, that, work, that piece. But that piece, as you know, is the, what is the name of the Sanskrit alphabet? Deva Nagari. It's where the Devas are. It's, in other words, each of those Sanskrit letters is a, a bit Brahman shining here within Prakriti. There's no other language that is like that. It is pieces of Brahman shining their light. So what is the word video mean? Speaking of history, it comes from Veda. What does Veda mean? To see. That which allows them to see. One of its meanings, of course. But one of its primary meanings. And Vedic Vidya, video, to see. See the movie. So this world is the movie being projected from Brahman. Right? Haranmayena Patre na Sankhyasya Vihita Mukha Tantva Pushana Patrinu Satya Dharmaya Drishna. How's my time doing? Twenty more minutes. Ten more? All right. So, are you all with me? I'm giving you a lot. I'm giving you what you deserve. The crash course. That your English is your weak spot. My Sanskrit pronunciation is my weak spot. I'm sure you hear it as I say it various things. And I say, well, he's got a bit of an accent, but the weak spot of the words, anyway. Exactly. So if I had enough time to spend with you, I would perfect my elocution. But if you tried to speak English, I would help you get to that level. And yes, I'm a poet. And I'm only going to do a brief for you. I want to show you something. I and mean, I'll do it slowly. And you'll miss some of it because it's English poetry. But it's a Vedanta poem. It's about what we see. It's called the scene. S-C-E-N-E. Well, when I saw you see me, see you, I could see you saw me too. We saw the same thing. I was me and you were you, although the thing we saw was common, it appeared as something new. Because we saw that seeing it was something both of us could do. I had not seen that you were seeing seeing only what I saw, but seeing you was seeing something, seeing something I had seen. This seemed to clear the whole thing up until we saw that we were being seen before we saw each other seeing it. Now I saw that seeing was a scene set up by someone who was watching, seeing who would see that he could see that what we saw was seen before we saw it, and that see her see. See, make it three. The things, the things were there to see before we saw them, <laughs> and they were seen as like see. Thank you very much. Yes. So in poetry, in English, if you are careful, you don't create another problem. And then I point to Sanskrit, and I say, but if you really want to know what I, what I just said, it's, it's called Vedanta. It teaches you to see who you really are where you really are. I'm really serious. If you get, so this is an important part of this. If you get in the right tone of voice, no one will think it's a religion. No one will think you're trying to convert them. So I have a little saying for this. English. No conversion. No Me too. So enjoyed your company. Ah, right. 
no coercion, no conversion, only friendly conversation. That's how we teach them. See? And with slogans like that, right now, if Narendra Modi said, we'd love to tell you about our culture, no coercion, no conversion, only friendly conversation. This is the user-friendly handbook. This is your user's manual. And so, with that in mind, you step forward now. Just exactly, if you were going to teach a grade school about Sanskrit, you'd adjust how you talk so their minds could grasp the basics that they need to know. If you do that right now with the Hindu youth, you'll change history. If you be the smartest kid on the block, you won't change history. Because no one will be smart enough to understand you. But you can be bold. And that is my proposition. By doing this, I'm simply trying to encourage you to do this with me. So we do this together. I have not started another Sampradaya. I am not reinterpreting the Bhagavad Gita. I am simply bringing it out with clarity. It's clarity we need now so that we don't do anything that you could argue with. You just are clear. And that clarity proves we're not a religion, proves we're not domineering, proves we're not stratified with a caste system. All those things will get explained show by show, word by word, until there's a new word to use. Varna is the word to use. I just gave a talk. It was the medical school book. Remember? Institute of Ayurveda. I gave a talk there yesterday. Remarkable school. You know what they're doing? They're crossing over all medicine, all healing, into a single discipline under the AEDs, under the flag of Ayurveda. And of course, this is what I do as a Jyotish. Jyotish is actually the psychology of the Vedic culture. So what does the psychology start with? More than one life, how many lives? As many as you'd like. That's the psychology of the Veda. We start there. So what we're going to do next is decolonize all of these subjects, philosophy, psychology, all of it. What we're going to also include in therapeutics is your diet. All during COVID, I've been thinking, so you eat McDonald's and you're, and you're worried about your health. Well, McDonald's is going to kill you faster than COVID. So if that's the case, change your diet. How would I do that? Well, you've got to know your dosha, your body type. Bata, Pinta, Kapha. We've got to know the the grahas, so we've got to know the planets, so that we know internally what's the biochemistry that's causing your body to be the way it is. And then we treat each child this way. What is it, Marukula? Isn't it a place where this goes on? Isn't it what's supposed to happen at the beginning of their life? They're given understandings of these parts of Samkhya so that they see the world in practical ways and know how to live it in a healthy way that is dark. And with that, I think I've said enough. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Sadhguru. All right. Let's do another English word. We did God. Let's do Lord. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. As they say in the sun. In Scotland, And in England, there was a system, a caste system. You know, the British invented the caste system. The lords and ladies, properly speaking, but they all, you know, the peasants live on their land. They own the property. And so, the persons who owned the land were called lords and ladies. In Old English, it was half lard, H-A-L-F-L-A-R-D. A flard and half lady. So lord and lady is the British caste system where the land is passed on to the children in each generation. And those are called lords and ladies. You'll notice in the Christian prayer that is most dominant, give us this day our daily bread. The slavery system, the caste system is based in England on the British lords. Now you got it, what they do? A lord 
guards the bread and gives it to the peasants and the lady and the loaf lady and the loaf lord is what they're called a flard and half lady they keep and hold the bread now will anyone please tell me why in all of the translations of the bhagavad gita and many other Vedic texts Sri bhagavan is called lord bhagavan is that not the worst colonization you can imagine just multiplying and and perpetuating the caste so-called what the British called your caste system they gave it to you they're colonizing you You've got to stop it yeah. my Dharma not take the verb <laughs> we are a team together she has ten arms <laughs> I'm the product and she's the CEO and this is the lady we work for, all of them, for Sri Saraswati, for Sri Lakshmi, for Sri Durga, Pratamam Chalapuji Chatitiyam Brahmachari, Titiyam Chandagante, Ti Kushman, Ti Chaturthakam, Panchamam Skandamate, Ti Shashtam, Katyayani, Ti Chasaptamam, Kalaradri, Ti Mahakaori, Ti Shashtamam, Navamam Siddhidadri Chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, respected. I'm a strong sir. In his lecture on decolonized Bhagavad Gita, respected, I'm strong sir has not only delivered on certain transnational problems but one thing becomes clear when Dr. Armstrong was saying that there are no synonyms or epithets of certain Sanskrit words in other languages particularly in English I think Dr. Armstrong internationally acclaimed scholar has substantiated the factual position that there is no dictionary in any language of the world like Amar Post, Alayud Post, Bhattas Patyam, Tapital Patrum, Medhini Post, or Vajyanti Post, or so on and so forth. We are too thankful to you all. <clears throat> and uh, I would like to say that uh, we find uh, Maitreyi, we find Dargi in our Indian tradition. But today, here itself, we have gone another Gargay or another Maitreyi in respected Sandy Graham, madam. So, we are very thankful to you also, madam. No. Uh, actually, Professor Hong uh, has delivered his lecture on the decolonized Bhagavad Gita translation problems. If uh, anybody from our CSU headquarters or the directors and other faculty members associated with us virtually in this program want to solve any curiosity as far as the lecture of Dr. Armstrong is concerned, they are most welcome. Yes, sir, good good evening, all of you, sir. Basically, my there is no question, it's only simple query. Yes. Simply, sir, it's not by any sort of question. A query, sir, as you have told, you have delivered that uh, Sanskrit was subjugated to subjugate India. Okay. But do you think, sir, due to its uh, lofty and stupendous approach, language of Sanskrit can be subjugated first? Second, sir, that in New Era, the world is 
looking towards Sanskrit. How do you think the, the Indologist, apart from India, look in new approach, new dimension regarding Sanskrit, not as a cultural, not only cultural, not only a resilience, and it was banned by the British or some of the modern scholars due to the not to be much more uh, dimensional approach of Sanskrit. The, at present century, what showed observation is with special reference to a problem regarding Sanskrit. Vedangas. Part of this discussion are the six Vedangas, the uppermost of which is Jyotish. Without Jyotish, we're stuck in a one lifetime worldview, and nobody can understand Bharat in a one lifetime worldview. That's their disablement. The whole world is disabled thinking there's only one life, and you can't teach them anything until they get over that, because if they're so small minded that that's all they see. So it's important to understand that what has to happen first is a change in who you're talking to. They have to fundamentally be ready or they are not adhikari. So we have to make a curriculum of solving this misunderstanding of Sanskrit that is according to adhikari, both for the Hindu youth and for those coming in from the outside. And step by step, bring them in by asking questions first to determine their adhikari. And adhikari, by the way, became educare in the Greek, which meant to bring out an education in English, which means to dump on top of. So we have to stop dumping education on top of people and find their adhikari and build a curriculum. And we can do this together. I am your English expert. You are my Sanskrit expert. When this happens, will create a vocabulary in waves of sophistication and development that will change the way that the game is played. It's called reprogramming the world. That is our goal. Take this linguistic ability, work together from the two sides. That's why I was brought in. That's why you were given the gifts you were given. Yad yad achara ji shri shtas. For many, many lives, we finally understand who we are and what to do, and then all we want is seva. Ladies and gentlemen, you have prepared for this moment to take this as your seva, to become a voice of the Veda to the world, to those who are capable of listening in a friendly way. And it's an honor to be with you. If I, if I can add to that, um, when Sanskrit was originally translated, you have to remember it was translated by Christian clerics and their worldview as Jeffrey had mentioned wasn't big enough to even understand or see your worldview so there's a couple of big traps and one of them is the many gods when you say many gods the Christian heresy is there is only one God so immediately they have removed the devas so that is the other heresy Millions of women were killed in Europe because of the belief in the devas, seeing the devas in the forest, healing herbs. They made Ayurveda illegal punishment by death. So they did. A, so it, it, basically what I'm saying, it has to start with you changing how you're talking about yourself. So don't use demigods. Demigods means half a god, demi half, right? So that's the other one. It's in all of your texts demigod this demigod that multiple gods you've got to stop saying multiple gods and start learning to say they're davis um and, and forces, davis. forces of nature what they represent like you said ceos of the department you've got to start giving a bigger vision because they have purposely put traps in these translations even when we were translating we had sanskrit we, we interviewed various sanskrit scholars 
to check our Sanskrit because, as Jeffrey says, we have a good understanding of English and we need help with the Sanskrit. It was very difficult for us to find an uncolonized Sanskritist <laughs> because you were all saying soul instead of atma. Spiritual God, Lord, Satan. You see, so you were arguing for the colonizer. So it took us quite a few, it took us 10 years to do this book because it was such a, a Jeffrey worked very hard to find out why you were kind of undermining yourself. And we hope we've done our best effort. I'm sure there'll be, you know, changes in this book as we go along. But as Jeffrey said, we need your help. This is your culture. We are so privileged to know this much of it. And we spend 24 hours a day learning your culture. We talk to the youth all the time. And NRI, you're losing your youth, as Jeffrey said. They can't explain themselves in English. So we'd like to work together with you to show the world how great your culture is. Our culture is. Yes, like you said. Absolutely. No, is the turn of respected guest of honor Goswami, sir. Before calling him, I just uh, want to share with you 30 seconds. Yesterday, I had a report with respected Goswami, sir. During his introduction, he told me that he belongs to Bengal. But uh, seeing his erudity and multi-dimensional activities and views, I thought that this person, that the respected Goswami sir is not a Bengali. He is a person from universe, that is, he is a universal person. No, I pray respected Goswami sir to deliver his words. Goswami sir. Honorable Professor Sinibas Bhaktiji, Vice Chancellor at Central Sanskrit University, Professor Manwali Viswalji, Dean Central Sanskrit University, and Professor Bharat Gupta Ji, Indian Professor from Delhi University. I feel honored for dressing the ceremony as guest of honor as Central Sanskrit University. So thanks to Central Sanskrit University for inviting Mr. Jeffrey Armstrong as a speaker on decolonized Bhagavad Gita translation problem between English and Sanskrit. Today is an auspicious day, it is being celebrated as Swami Vivekananda Jayanti, Juba Divas, in India and all over the world as well. I expressed my heartfelt thanks to CSU for arranging such a beautiful program. और क्या बताऊं मैं जो मैं देख रहा हूं आज ऐसा देवी जी को देख के एक तो आ रहा है मैं जैसे पंडित कुछ नहीं हूं तो आपका साथ एकदम करना क्या होगा मुझे मालूम नहीं है विद्वतंच निपतंच नहीं बतुलन पदाचन सदैसे कुछ जगह राजा विद्वान सर्वत्र कुछ जगह देवी जी को देख के ऐसा ही लगा ये इंडियन साजिद लेके इतना सुंदर स्टडी किया उन्होंने हम लोग उनको एसएस के हम तो प्रोफाइल का चेक करके हमारा जो जुरु मेंबर है जेपी जी को सिलेक्ट किया है तो उनकी जो है ना कुछ आल्सो दे इज नॉट अ किंग बट विद्वान है तो इंडियन साथियों को लेके इतना जो बड़ा है संस्कृत जो हमारा बेसिक लैंग्वेज है सारी लैंग्वेज का तो एक उन्होंने स्टार्ट किया ये सबसे बढ़िया बात है तो और कुछ प्रोग्राम हमारा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के लिए जो है इंडियन ट्रांसिप कल्चरल रिलेशन अंडर द एजेस ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टेट अफेयर हैज Conferred the Distinguished Alumni Award for the year 2021 to Mr. Jeffrey Armstrong, who is from Vancouver, Canada, for his outstanding contribution to Indian studies, Bhagavad Gita, Sanskrit, research on Ayurveda, Hinduism, ancient Indian scriptures too. So you may be aware that Indian Council of Cultural Relations, under the aegis of Ministry of External Affairs, established in the year 1950. And the founder president of this organization was the found, uh, sorry, first education minister of Indian in India, Professor Abdul Kalam Azad. The objectives of ICCR are to formulate and foster India's external cultural relationships with other countries in order to strengthen our mutual understanding with them. The core mandate of ICCR are as follows: We have international students division. 
बाहर का जितना भी बच्चा है उनको हम लोग स्कॉलरशिप देते हैं पढ़ाई करने के लिए अंडर ग्रेजुएट पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट सब दिन में स्कॉलरशिप देते हैं सारे कुछ हम लोग मेंटेन करते हैं इसी स्टेट का तरफ से हमारा कोर मेन जगह है डिस्टिंग्विंस विजिटर्स प्रोग्राम इंडियन चेयर्स है बोर्ड हमारे प्रोफेशनल लोग जो है जो इंडियन सब्जेक्ट को लेके स्टडी करते हैं इंटरडीज वो सब लोग बाहर भेजते हैं बाहर में जो यूनिवर्सिटी है तो दे आर द होस्ट यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर इंडियन प्रोफेसर वी आर सेंडिंग थ्रू चेयर सेक्शन इनकमिंग कल्चरल डेलीगेशन एंड आउटकमिंग कल्चरल डेलीगेशन बाहर से लोग इधर आके पार्टन करते हैं हमारे इंडिया से भी बाहर जाते हैं टू फर्स्टर आवर कल्चर रिलेशनशिप एवर सेक्शन मैं हूँ उसी सेक्शन का प्रोग्राम डायरेक्टर हमारा अभी तक जो अवार्ड है दी इंस ऑन द अवार्ड इज इन इंडोलॉजी सब्जेक्ट हमारा अवार्ड है एलोमनी अवार्ड ही हमारे जो स्टूडेंट बच्चे लोग बाहर से आके पढ़ाई करते हैं इंडिया में आके उनको हम लोग ऐसे इसके तो तुम जून में पास तो अगर कोई पेशाब कंट्रीब्यूशन है है तो ये इंडिया स्टडीज को लेके तो जाए तो हम लोग उनको एस कल्चर एम्बेसडर हम लोग उनको रिकॉग्निशन देते हैं और अवार्ड के लिए हम लोग रिकमेंड करते हैं नॉमिनेट करते हैं नॉमिनेशन भेजते हैं हमारा जो मिशन है मिशन भेज देते हैं उसी हिसाब से जूरी मेंबर उसका एसेस करके डिसाइड करते हैं अभी जो प्रोग्राम चल रहा है प्रधानमंत्री जी का स्पेशल इनिशिएटिव है जी ट्वेंटी प्रोग्राम इज रनिंग राइट नाउ एंड वी हैव हिंदी सेक्शन टू प्रमोट आवर नेशनल लैंग्वेज हिंदी एंड एग्जीबिशन सेक्शन कोई एग्जीबिशन होता है जो हम लोग कहते हैं बाहर से आते हैं कि इधर इंडिया के अंदर में जो भी है तो ये भी हम लोग करते हैं साथ साथ में बास चर्चो हमने बाहर भेजते हैं तो यह है मेन कार्यक्रम तो आई सर कन्वे माई थैंक्स एंड गैटिट्यूड टू सी एस यू फेडरेशन सच ए ब्यूटीफुल इवेंट ऑन दिस डे विद मिस्टर जेफ्री आउस्टन तो आई हैव टू गिव द फुल स्टेप नाउ अभी रुकना है थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर एसीएस प्रेजेंस अधुना मध्य केंद्रीय संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय संस्कृत वार्ता प्रकाश्यते नवीनतम से अंक से विमोचन अविष्य अहम निवेदया प्रधान संपादका सी अोध प्रकाश विभाग से निदेशक आचार्य भगवेश्वर भट्टवर अभी
आप जितने भी लोग विराजमान हैं यहाँ और जो भी लोग दूर दूर तक इस केंद्रीय संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय से संबंधित सुन रहे हैं सबको मैं प्रणाम करता हूँ सबको नमस्कार करता हूँ मैं धन्य हूँ कि आज मुझे कुछ कहने का अपने विचार व्यक्त करने का एक सुअवसर मिल रहा है और विषय जो मेरे सामने है उसके विषय में बहुत अच्छी गंभीर चर्चा का प्रारंभ या सूत्रपात हमारे पूर्व वक्ता ने किया है वेरी वेल ही हैज अप्रोच द सब्जेक्ट लेट द ग्राउंड फॉर इट दैट हाउ लैंग्वेज प्रिवेंट्स फ्रॉम अंडरस्टैंड एंड अनलेस दैट ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी इज ओवर कम यू कैन नॉट कम्युनिकेट बिटवीन कल्चर दो संस्कृतियों या पृथ्वी के दो भागों के बीच में जो एक के बाद एक गलत फहमिया दुर्भावनाए इत्यादि होती रहती हैं, उनका कारण भाषा भी हो सकती है तो भाषा जोड़ती नहीं भाषा तोड़ती नहीं है इसलिए जो भाषा विद है उनको ये देखना है कि भाषा के प्रयोग से जो अर्थ की निष्पत्ति हो वो सर्वग्राह्य हो और सबके हित में और सत्य निष्ठ तो बड़ा अच्छा एक विषय का प्रवेश हुआ अब उस बात को आगे बढ़ाते हुए मैं विवेकानंद जी के विषय में कुछ बातें रखूंगा आपके समक्ष क्योंकि विवेकानंद हमारे पिछले ढाई सौ वर्ष के इतिहास में वो अद्भुत पुरुष हैं जिन्होंने पहली बार अमेरिका में यानी शिकागो में और फिर बाद में यूके इंग्लैंड वगैरह में भारतीय दर्शन भारतीय दर्शन के प्रति एक आस्था पैदा कर दी अध्ययन तो बहुत पहले से था लोग आते जाते रहे थे लिखते रहे थे और ब्रिटिश साम्राज्य की संस्थापना हो चुकी थी अठारह के बाद किसी किस्म का विद्रोह कहिए या लालसा कहिए स्वतंत्र होने की इस सब की भी समाप्ति हो चुकी थी आई मीन इट वॉज नियरली फोर्टी इयर्स दैट सिंस दिन absurd had been crushed so this was a time when the west was making very tight grips of colonization at the same time there was an understanding among the intellectuals vidwanon ke andar jagyasa thi wo jagyasa ho chuki thi lagbhag उन्नीसवीं शताब्दी के प्रारंभ में ही जब कुछ संस्कृत के ग्रंथों का अनुवाद हुआ और गेटे जैसे लोगों ने भी यूरोप में कालिदास की अभिज्ञान शाकुंतलम इत्यादि को पढ़ा और ये ग्रंथ देखे तो उन्होंने देखा कि एक अलग दृष्टि है और जर्मन फिलोसोफर्स भी इस पर सोचने लगे थे और ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट इंग्लैंड में अमेरिका में थोरो इमर्सन वगैरह थे लेकिन एक ऐसी सभा में जहां तथा कथित रिलीजन या धर्मों के लोग इकट्ठे हुए या ये कहा जाए कि उसके मठाधीश इकट्ठे हुए यू नो दी पीपल हु आर इन पावर दे वर ऑल देयर इन द पार्लियामेंट ऑफ रिलीजन उस जगह में जाकर भारतीय दर्शन भारतीय दृष्टि को रखना और ये कहना कि ये भी एक बहुत बड़ा बहुत बड़ा 
एक दर्शन है ये एक धर्म नहीं है ये एक थियोलॉजी नहीं है ये दूसरों को परिवर्तित या प्रभावित करने का माध्यम नहीं है ये दर्शन है सत्य सत्यम मुखम की जो बात है कि सत्य का मुख तो छुपा हुआ है जब वो हटेगा जिस प्रयास से तभी तो दर्शन होगा सो so, ये चीज जो थी विवेकानंद ने उस पार्लियामेंट में रखी और आपको पता है कि बड़ा कठिन था वहां प्रवेश पाना द डोर कीपर्स वर मेनी ही वॉज नॉट अलाउड इट वॉज विद ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी दैट ही वॉज अलाउड टू स्पीक एंड रिप्रेजेंट द ओल्डेस्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ मॉन्क्स See, monks means people who are just busy with themselves, don't have much concern with their life. This, this is the usual uh, idea of monk in the West. Somebody who is far away. Anyway, he was represented, and there, he kept the darshan. So, the Vivekananda was facing the challenge in front of him. What was it? देखिए सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज उस जमाने में भी वही था जो आज वो चैलेंज क्या है अभी हमारे पूर्व वक्ता ने भाषा के माध्यम से उस चैलेंज को बताया जेफरी टॉक्ट अबाउट हाउ दिस चैलेंज इज क्रिएटेड बाय लैंग्वेज बट व्हाट इज द रूट ऑफ इट द रूट ऑफ इट इज अ फंडामेंटल प्रैक्टिस that's not the, the prejudice is not that the white man was carrying the burden of enlightenment and that they had to give knowledge to uh, the east i mean this is how they expressed it or justified colonization but the burden was that people who worship idols have to be brought to the light so see th- this is the this is the most significant war take it from me right or wrong this is the most significant war that has happened in last 2000 years i have a bit of knowledge of ancient and modern greek and i have my books on this subject the west swears by greece and rome the intellectual tradition the west imagines itself to be the inheritor pashchim ke log ye mante hain ki greece aur rome ke wo uttaradhikari lekin greece aur rome ki sanskriti ka sarvanash kisne kiya isaiyon ne kyun kiya kyunki wo मूर्ति पूजन तो देखिए विश्व में जो सबसे बड़ा युद्ध है आज भी है वो मूर्ति पूजक और मूर्ति भंजक के बीच में द रेस्ट इज अज ऑफ फुट नोट द ग्रेटेस्ट वॉर इज बिटवीन दो वर्शिप आइडल्स एंड दो ब्रेक आइडल आई एम नॉट से दो नॉट वर्शिप आइडल because that would not be the complete truth the complete truth is those who want to eliminate idols iconoclasm to vivekanand ke aage ye channel tha ki in sab logo ke samaksh jo ki pure ke pure murti bhanjak parampara ke hain ibrahim ki parampara ke hain all those people who belong to that Uh, people of the book who believe in a formless, uh, ind- indescribable God, Nirguna, etc., etc., not in our terms. How to present that there can be a darshan which is legitimate from India? You see, this was the challenge. If you say that i am somebody who worship the idols then you would perhaps not even get an admission to speak 
So Vivekanand started with the concept of Vedanta. Or what is in traditional thought called Brahmavan. That is, there is Sarva Vidam Karu Brahma, all the three, four, five Mahavakyas that are there. And he started to tell people that the unity of the divine is most important. You see, his whole message was a message which presented that there is the search for the divine, that the divine is most important, and that the divine he suggested is there in non-Christian terms and also in non idolatry he didn't mention that at all because that was not the subject. But the idea there was to talk about humanity and to talk about the supreme status of the divine. The supreme knowledge that is to be known because that is the Vedantic tradition. Now, in the Vedantic tradition, and I'll come to this later, the distinction between the Nirgun and the Sagun is very different from what is imagined in the Christian world. The whole philosophic system here is very different. Aguna Saguna Nahi Kachu Bheda. This is something which even our latest Pusidas, etc., are saying. Because the what is Brahma also becomes Sakar. And Sakar. Brahm is no less Brahm than Nirgun Brahm. This is, this is a fundamental aspect of Indian philosophy and which has been there right from uh, the Vedic times to the latest times. But what had to be presented to America was the idea of the spiritual because he was speaking among Christians who were Unitarians. He was speaking among people who were trying to develop in the West some kind of communication between different philosophic faiths. You know, like Madame Blavatsky and Theosophists and various people at that time who talked of the spiritual over and above, let us say, the story of Jesus Christ or the whole uh, theological system of Christianity, Christ as Savior. Uske upar jo baat hai, ke ek shakti hai, ya ek satta hai, the satya ek hai, is tarha ki baate karne wale jo loog thai, unho ne hi unko vahan aane ki ijazat di thi parliament mein, unke beech mein wo bol rahe thai, is liye Vivekanand ne Vedant ko rakha or Nirgun Vedant. He presented only the Nirgun Vedant. Now Vedant is not Nirgun, everybody knows. Otherwise Shankaracharya would not have written Saundarya Zahri. If, if in India Vedant was only Nirgun, if there was no Masana, then the whole concept of Avatar doesn't exist. Bharat mein to wo Brahma jo hai wo sagun ho jata hai na wo to mata ki god mein khelne lagta hai wo kya hai purandar das ki kriti adi siddhalaya soda jagat uddharana adi siddhalaya soda ki jo jagat ka uddhar karne wala nirgun brahma hai ye sagun ho kar yashoda ki god mein khel raha hai to sara avatar vaadi to bharat ka us par aadharit hai आर्य समाजियों के अतिरिक्त और कुछ लोगों के अतिरिक्त भारत में जितने भी संप्रदाय हैं सब अवतार को तो मानते हैं। It is not possible. They, they can be absolutely no nothing called Indian culture or temples, life or anything without uh, without the admission of the fact that the nirgun is constantly present there as someone and he appears as someone. ये बात मैं आपको इसलिए बता रहा हूँ कि जब 
विवेकानंद की बात होती है तो विवेकानंद ने एक विशिष्ट भाषा को एक कारण से क्योंकि आप उसी भाषा में बोल सकते हैं आप उसी उसी भाषा में कम्युनिकेट कर सकते हैं उस समय क्योंकि तो पहला काम था एक डायलॉग बना द फर्स्ट टास्क वॉज टू क्रिएट अ डायलॉग विथ पीपल हुर ऑन एब्राहम इसी देवर नो ड्रूड्स देयर दर्शनों के इतिहास को देखें तो इब्राहिम की परंपरा के तो तीन संप्रदाय हैं यहूदी ईसाई और इस्लाम लेकिन बाकी जितने भी धार्मिक संप्रदाय दुनिया में हमेशा रहे हैं वो तो सब मूर्ति पूजक दे आर ऑल वर्शिपर्स ऑफ समथिंग रियल समथिंग विच विच इज मुहूर्त विच इज ए स्टैचू दिस दिस इज बी द ट्रेडिशन ऑल ओवर हाउ एवर बिकॉज ही वॉज टॉकिंग टू दीज पीपल सो ही टॉक्ट प्राइमरिली ऑफ वेदांत and therefore he established the vedantic societies in different parts america i think california was one and chicago and new york it is first visit i think he established teen ya char unhone uh vedantic society ka prasthapan kiya to yahi karan tha ki wahan vedant chala aur uske baad bhi jo log gaye उसी परंपरा में जो बाद में योगानंद इत्यादि लोगों की परंपरा है तो लेटर ऑन फ्रॉम इंडिया दे वर ऑन वेदांत सेंट्रिक ये भक्ति वेदांत तो बहुत बाद में जाती है पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ समबडी लाइक भक्ति वेदांत एंड हरे कृष्णा और सगुण उपासना कृष्णा मार्ग जो उनका पुष्टि मार्ग तो नहीं वो दूसरा उधर बंगाल का मार्ग है तो वो परिस्थिति बहुत बाद में आती है करीब करीब डेढ़ सौ साल बाद आती है तो विवेकानंद का ये महत्वपूर्ण तो कार्य था कि उनकी भाषा में एक डायलॉग को बनाना इस समय आपको किस वाद को चलाना है किस प्रकार से अपने प्रतिद्वंदी से बात करते ये बहुत आवश्यक है ये जानना बहुत आवश्यक है कि आज की कठिनाई क्या है जो कि संवाद में और कम्युनिकेशन में नहीं है तो वेदांत इस इस बात को पहचानते हुए वेदांत की प्रस्तावना अमेरिका में इंग्लैंड में यूरोप में विवेकानंद लेकिन जब भारत आते हैं तो वो वेदांत के दर्शन का प्रचार तो करते हैं लेकिन उनका जो चिंतन है वो कहीं और है वो फिर चिंतन है समाज सुधार वो चिंतन है लोक एकता है वो चिंतन है कि किस तरह से एक ऐसा भारतीय समाज बने जो पहले तो सबसे पहले तो नेशनलिस्ट हो यानी भारत को गुलामी की बेड़ियों से तोड़कर बाहर निकाल इसलिए विवेकानंद जितने बड़े नेशनलिस्ट हुए उतने बड़ा नेशनलिस्ट उस समय कोई नहीं हुआ और वो श्री अरविंद के आदर्श थे क्यों थे श्री अरविंद के आदर्श विवेकानंद क्योंकि पूरे वेदांत के साथ पूरे योग के साथ उनकी दृष्टि राष्ट्रीय स्वतंत्रता में लगी थी और इसी तरह भारत के अंदर आकर उन्होंने ये समस्या देखी कि मैंने अमेरिका में तो बात की वेदांत की बात की स्पिरिचुअलिटी की बात की और मैंने ये प्रोजेक्ट किया कि भारत जो है वो एक स्पिरिचुअल देश है या हमारा जो दर्शन है वो छोटे छोटे संप्रदायों से अलग है और हम मूर्ति पूजा में चलिए हम से कमई करते लगे हैं नहीं लगे हैं लेकिन ये प्रमुख बात नहीं है वेदांत तो प्रमुख है विदेश में तो ये बात की लेकिन भारत में जो बात की वो समाज सेवा 
वो शिक्षा की बात वो स्त्रियों की शिक्षा की बात थी वो जितनी भी चीजें उन्होंने एक ब्रह्म समाज में उन्होंने सीखी थी अपने बचपन में उस एजेंडा को उन्होंने आगे बढ़ाया देखिए एक चीज समझने की है और इसके समझे बिना शायद आज की समस्याओं का हल नहीं निकलेगा उन्नीसवीं शताब्दी में एक बहुत बड़ी दुर्घटना होती है इन द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी समथिंग वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट है We got so intimidated by the Christians, so badly intimidated by the Christians, that we almost disowned, and in some cases, frankly, disowned Murti Puja, because we said, yes, yes, we are also monists. We are people believing in one supreme reality, and uh, worshiping the idols is not very. So we had Dayan and Saraswati. He was a great revolutionary. He did so many things for women, for education, for various changes. But he was very shy, even of admitting the fact that the Vedic devatas are something other than param pita parvesh. If you read, if you read the uh translations from arya samaj then indra is translated as param pita parmeshwar saraswati is translated as param pita parmeshwar sab kuch param pita parmeshwar ban jata hai ye something is wrong with this ha ah, hello can you hear me now ha ah, to dekhiye main jo baat keh raha hu apna ho sakta hai kuch लोगों को असमंजस में डाले बट ये यथार्थ है नहीं वी गॉट सो इंटीमिडेटेड दैट वी सेड ओके वी जस्ट टॉक अबाउट द द सुप्रीम विदाउट फॉर्म विदाउट शेप विदाउट सो देन वी हैड ब्रह्मो समाज वी हैड ब्रह्मो समाज इन वर्शिप ऑफ द क्रिश्चियन आइडियल्स टू द एक्सटेंट दैट राजा राम मोहन रॉय फाइनली कन्वर्टेड एंड बिकेम अ क्रिश्चियन एंड वॉज बेरिड इन इंग्लैंड You see, we 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 talk of him as somebody who brought about great reform, and I'm sure Jeffrey will agree with me. But he turned it to English language, English education, and the English thought so heavily that he was almost uh, somebody working for my colleague. and this is the this is the curse which we still have to live with which is which is true and he demonstrated this morning how the grip exists of the language so this thing continued vivekanand used this in order to communicate but vivekanand knew the truth of it. because vivekanand was a brahma samaji all right but then he did to find any solace in brahma samaj the answers didn't come to him from brahma samaj the answers came to him from who ramakrishna aur ramakrishna kya the kali ke upasak sakshat murti ke upasak the wo to sagun upasak the aur wo yog mein jab unko unne diksha di और जब शक्तिपात का अनुभव हुआ विवेकानंद को तब वो सारा ब्रह्मो समाज जो था वो धुल गया जैसे कीचड़ धुल जाती है क्योंकि तो ये तो ठीक है वादे वादे चाहे थे तत्व बोधा हम बात करते रहे निरंतर करते रहे लेकिन जब तक साक्षात अनुभव नहीं होता तब तक कुछ नहीं पता और भारतीय दर्शन का तो पहला सिद्धांत क्या है स्वानुभूति स्वानुभूति एक मानम भरतीहरी ने कहा स्वानुभूति एक माना नवा शांता तो स्वानुभूति करा दी जब इस काली के सगुण उपासक ने और योग में दीक्षित कर दिया तब उनकी ज्ञान यात्रा शुरू हुई है उसी के बाद तो वो जाते विदेश भी जाते तो विवेकानंद को बहुत अच्छी तरह से 
ये पता था कि निर्गुण और सगुण दोनों एक ही हैं और साधना का मार्ग योग ही है लेकिन जब अमेरिका जाते हैं तो उनकी भाषा में वहां प्रारंभ करने के लिए वो वेदांत से प्रारंभ भारत में उनकी पर हालत अलग है भारत में तो वो मठ बनाते हैं रामकृष्ण मठ की स्थापना करते हैं तपस्या की बात करते हैं संन्यास्त धर्म जो चतुर आश्रम में चौथा है उसकी प्रस्तावना करते हैं अपने और शिष्य बनाते हैं और उसका प्रचार सारे भारत में होता है तो विवेकानंद इस प्रकार से युग पुरुष है कि परिवर्तन करने के लिए किस से क्या बात करनी है और किसके मन को कैसे बदलना है ये जानना आवश्यक है लेकिन इससे विवेकानंद के कारण नहीं लेकिन उस समय और युग ऐसा था कि कुछ दुष्प्रभाव चलता रहा हमने जो बात करना शुरू किया पश्चिम से केवल निर्गुण में ही वेदांत में ही तो देखिए एक धारणा हो जाती है कि असली काम तो किसी ना किसी प्रकार की निर्गुण उपासना सम काइंड ऑफ ए निर्गुण उपासना सम काइंड ऑफ ए योगिक वेंचर सम काइंड ऑफ ए एफर्ट और मार्ग ऑफ साधना विच डज नॉट इन्वॉल्व मूर्ति पूजा इज बेटर दिस इज ए फंडामेंटल प्रेजिटिस दैट कम्स इन टू एक्सिस्टेंस इन द इंडियन लाइफ सो यू हैव योगी इज लाइक श्री ऑर्बिन and their whole system is largely concentrating on yoga although he reconciles all other aspects of worship and then we have analysis of the bhagavad gita as this kaam karma something which is applied to practical life which can be used for social reform which can be used for political reform which can be used for anything which improves your status in the world and then we have gandhi gandhi never went to temples although he fought for entry of shudras to temples but then practically the mode of sadhana which was adopted was social reform or something which was concentrating upon non practical non sagun upasana this is very important and this created a huge neglect for the most dynamic aspect of hinduism which was the hindu temple and the reason why today the hindu temple is not in the hands of hindus is precisely this is precisely this because we have not seen the unity of this kind of worship with vedanta we have neglected it and therefore somebody else is making hey from our temples ek prakar se hamare dhan ka aur hamari sab cheezon ka upyog jo hai kuch aur log kar rahe hain wo hindu usme nahi to dekhiye bade bade log jab kisi pravartan karte hain kisi प्रकार की उसका तो उसके अंदर युग के हिसाब से तो अच्छाई होती है लेकिन आने वाले युगों के हिसाब से कुछ कमियां रह जाती है और आज सबसे बड़ी कमी इसी बात की है कि जो भारतवर्ष के अंदर सगुण और निर्गुण उपासनाओं में एकता थी और जो भेद नहीं देखा जाता था उस भेद को आप न आने दे न चलने दे और मैं समझता हूं कि विवेकानंद अरविंद और इन सारे महापुरुषों ने जो कार्य किया उस कार्य को आगे बढ़ाने का यही साधन है क्योंकि आपको परिवर्तन करने का बड़े से बड़े मनीषी के दर्शन में आपको परिवर्तन करने पड़ेंगे और जब तक आप वो परिवर्तन नहीं करेंगे 
तब तक शायद कोई बहुत बड़ा कलात्मक परिवर्तन भी भारत में क्योंकि भारत में एक कला की उपासना सगुण उपासना के बिना नहीं हो सकती सारी उपासना राम और कृष्ण की उपासना से कलात्मक उपासना होती है जितने भी ग्रंथ हैं जितने भी पुराण हैं जितने भी इतिहास हैं जितना भी नाट्य शास्त्र है जितने भी नाटक हैं चाहे वो प्राचीन भाषाओं में हो या आधुनिक भाषाओं में हो वे सब चरित्र पात्र भाव और चतुर पुरुषार्थ धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष को एक सगुण रूप में आपके सामने रखते हैं और यही कार्य तुलसीदास और दक्षिण के भी कवियों ने किया इस कार्य में हम पीछे हो गए और मैं ये समझता हूं कि जब हम विवेकानंद अरविंद गांधी जैसे महापुरुषों की जीवनी को अब देखें तो ये भी देखें कि काम को किस तरह से और आगे बढ़ाना है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कोई एक दो तो प्रश्न हो तो मैं दे दू संप्रति स्वयं सन्नद्धास्म समुद्बोधन श्रोत अस्माकरा कुलपति महोदया विद्वत्जा श्रीमंत श्रीनिवास वर्ष्यी महोदया निवेदे यत अध्यक्षीयन उद्बोधन अस्मा अनुग्रहणंत कुलपति वर्या केंद्रीय संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय प्रांगणे अस्माक कार्यक्रम सभाषण अस्मा सामगता सर्वे पिथय विशिष्य डॉक्टर जिफ्री आमस्टा महाशया धवपत्नी सहिता अस्मागता आचार्य नानाशास्त्र विशारदा भरत गुप्त महाभागा एवं ईसीसीआर संस्थाया निदेशक महाभागा आर एन गोस्वामी महाभागा अस्माक अधिष्ठातृ महाशया आचार्य वर्मादी विश्वाल महाभागा अने चुपस्थिता आचार्य छात्राश्च अद विवेकानंद जयंती निमित्त ईसीसीआर संस्थाया सहयोग अस्माक विशिष्ट व्याख्या कार्यक्रम आयोजित यहाँ भारत वैचारिक दास्यम यदस्तल पोलिटिकल सैंस सामजशास्त्र इत्यादिषु न अस्माक वेदातशास्त्रे वैचारिक दास्यम यदि पिदृश्य तस्वारोपाया के विषय कचन विनूत व्याख्या कार्यक्रम अयोजित बेसिकली इन इंडिया फॉर लॉन्ग वी हैव बीन ट्राइंग टू कम आउट ऑफ द क्लचेस ऑफ द बेस्ट दिस इज टर्म एज डी कॉलोनाइजेशन ऑफ अवर माइंड सेट व्हाट इज दिस डी कॉलोनाइजेशन colony is established is not established just through the political science and social science these ideas the colonies colonization has happened within the mindset of our shastric tradition also as you have pointed out uh the whole agenda was not to capture the territory of india the whole agenda was to capture the mind 
can that is possible only through the capturing the shastric traditional texts so when we see the history of uh, indology uh, the texts that are translated into the western languages are not the texts of uh, scientific texts major texts that are translated are either puranas or dharmashastras why literature why because these are the literatures that we can use as the weapons to conquer the minds of the of the scholars and so if we look at the education system for last uh, uh, five decades uh, asmakam samskrita vidyaha api kathanchid kathanchideva tata upadveshikaranam ite dasti bandhane sampranthaha jata so today as uh, it is pointed out by professor jeffrey uh, even our sanskrit scholars and the works and the teaching method everything is is completely captured and, uh, there is nothing so they when, when madam said uh, we could not find a scholar who is not analyzed so that's very difficult even including all the scholars sitting here are somewhere or the other other, other way we are because we are again looking at our own shastras through the translations and the the, the categories and the, the terms that are used to translate the ideas into the modern terminologies are toxic really so you have a thankful to because we cannot do that so we cannot identify the roots of those terms uh, the for us this is just another term for you uh, it is uh, no it is you, know, you can you can find out the roots as i can find out the roots of sanskrit words yes so you can see it. sometimes we cannot see them as a good uh, uh, doctor uh, can see the toxins in the, in the in the body and he can uh, you know give the medicine to remove it similarly i think professor jaffrey has uh, worked uh, that so you both have worked on uh, it's a project it's a good great project that has us so please continue this project and uh, we will uh, we will uh, because we are also interested asmakam kendriya sanskrit vishwavidyalayasya vishaleshu parisareshu dashasha sahasradhika chhatraha patan the the whole idea is not just to preserve our shastras but to protect them from the toxic association protect them uh, that is also very important so what they say this is yes sides no now uh, because war has happening war is happening everywhere the uh, the army is not sitting in, 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 in this side or that side army is sitting everywhere so the new style of war the method of war is happening and of course uh, uh, professor uh, jaffrey uh, is our uh, you know uh, diplomatic thank you very much for coming and uh, delivering uh, a nice uh, no, uh, dialogue the starting night nice, nice dialogue here in our campus um, at the same time i thank iccr for uh, providing this opportunity for us we will continue uh, no, to do so more, more, more such activities parat atyakinchit mama vaktavyam asti atra asmakam acharya 
भरतगुप्तमहाभागा प्रास्तु यत भंजन कुत आर भारत भंजन नाम प्रतीक भंजन भारत से आर न्यू ऐडिया सहस्रवर्षेभ्य संघर्ष यलती संघर्ष से मूल न मता भारत सहस्राधिक मता आसन कदाचि संघर्ष अस्मा सनातन धर्म से नाना मुखेशु मता अश्वरवादी अभी अस्त सेश्वरा सी सांख्या सांख्यशरा निश्वरा सी बौद्धेशु भी चतुर्मुखा जैनेशु नाना मता अस्माक नाना मता षण्मता स्वयं दुर्गा शाक्त मत वैष्णव मत एक विभिन्न प्रस्थान सत्य भारत सनातन धर्म एक सनातन धर्म से मूल यतीक उपासना आसी तत्गुणोपासनाया प्रतीकोपासनाया निर्गुणचिंतन से निर्गुण तत्व से प्रतीकोपासनाया कभी विरोधा न परंतु तयोर्मे संघर्ष प्रपंच जाता भारत भंजन नाम प्रतीक भंजन भारत से भंजन आरब्ध किमर्थम एक चिंतन से आवश्यकता अद्य विवेकानंद जयंती दिन अस्त वाट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दीज टू डयलॉग्स ऑन द डे ऑफ विवेकानंद जी बिकॉज वी कन्सिडर दैट टूडे विवेकानंद इज इज ए सिंपल ऑफ इंडियन अस्मिता जेशन मैंडसेट and the other side detoxification of our uh, religion in one, in other sense i i can't another term the religiousization of our spiritualism bharatasya adhyatma shakti hi avartate tasyapi religion iti yad vartate tas tataha kinchit tat visha visheshana nirmuktam yathasya tatha karani vasmati uh, i think this is where Stand for Atmanirbhar Bharat. So, uh, in Indian Constitution, uh, there is a statement, a beginning statement: We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. But until today, we want to add. Today, we have to resolve in this uh, hall. we we must resolve and we should also continue to fight for this to include one more term that is india is spiritual bharatasya adhyatmika shakti yad prayat bharatam adhyatma desha adhyatma vidam rashtram evaj adhyatma rashtrasya punah pratisthapanartham asmakam prayasah samskritam tatra sadhanam asmakam so without spiritualism we cannot establish a secular social democratic republic so asmakam adhyatma bhumo eva bharatasya pratishtha sambhavati so with this idea today i call upon uh, my young uh, students and uh, faculty members vivekanand jayanti dine asmabhi uh, yatha etehi uh, murti pratika pratika upasanaya dirguna विरोधो तथा विवेकानंद विवेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकानंदेकान
अद्य अंतराष्ट्रीय स्तरता प्राप्त अयम 
प्रायशः अस्माकं मम कार्यकालस्य द्वि वर्षस्य अयम् उद्यमः टुडे वी हैव एन इंटरनेशनल स्कॉलर इन फ्रॉम बोथ साइड्स एंड दे हैव गिवन अ न्यू मेसेज व्हाट सॉर्ट ऑफ व्हाट सॉर्ट ऑफ एक्टिविटी एकेडमिक एक्टिविटी वी शुड स्टार्ट व्हाट इज आवर प्रोजेक्ट व्हाट इज आवर एजेंडा सो वी हैव सेट अ न्यू एजेंडा फॉर आवर यूनिवर्सिटी थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक्स अलॉट धन्यवाद
अस्माकम उद्देश्य भवे अस्माकम अभी अयम संकल्प भवे तेजांकृते वयम अभिनंदन अभी आधपठन चयम विश्वविद्यालय से पक्षता प्रकटयाम अभी अस्माक मध्य विराजते शैक्षिक विभाग से अधिष्ठाता आचार्य वनवाली विश्वान महाभाग अभी अन्न चये विश्वविद्यालय से कर्मचारिण अभी अधिकारिण अभी अस्माक प्राय आभारत विराजम सर्वेशा पिसरा ये निदेशका अध्यापका छात्र सभी धन्यवाद प्रकटय अहम विरमा धन्यवाद राष्ट्रदान Oh, <laughs> oh, 